Gamers, it's Kamling here, and do I have another epic video review for Game Nights Entertainment. James Cameron's Avatar The Game, based on the new movie of the same name. Believe it or not, it's actually pretty decent for a movie game. The game doesn't totally suck, and actually it's an average game with amazing HD visuals. Still, with the clunky and at times frustrating gameplay, this game definitely needs our review treatment. Our story revolves around a special ops signal specialist named Abel Ryder who Falco has ordered to come to the moon of Pandora and do some Avatar grunt work. Players may be a bit confused with the setting of the game being an actual prequel to the movie, so people who have not seen the movie are going to be totally lost, and that's not a good thing. Actually, the game doesn't really explain anything to you the more you keep playing either. All you know is that Abel is the whiz kid and the RDA needs his help very badly for something. James Cameron's Avatar, the game is a third-person shooter with action-adventure and platforming elements. The game falls into two modes of play, essentially, story mode and multiplayer mode. New game, or story mode, has characters take control of Able Rider, and gamers are able to make Rider either male or female. Anyway, after arriving on the moon of Pandora, you do a bunch of short errands like manning a turret, fixing broken equipment, and of course, test driving your avatar through the lush jungles. After 45 minutes or so, the game demands you choose a side for the upcoming war. Are you going to turn in the mole, or betray humanity to save the moon of Pandora? Or you can look at it this way, are you going to stay an awesome cowboy, or become an Indian? Because that's basically what this game is, space cowboys versus blue alien Indians. Heck, the Navi have bow and arrows for crying out loud. So, my uh, comparison actually works. Anyway, essentially you find out this is a war over minerals, so like all wars, and eventually Ryder understands what the RDA has planned all along. Again, it's up to the player to choose to stay as the RDA to harvest the minerals, or the Navi to protect the minerals. Avatar the game offers a lot of RPG and level up elements, and it even awards the player with better weapons and armor as you gain experience and progress through the story mode. You're also going to learn different skills that all have a varying use. Multiplayer has lots of options for the online gamer. Whether you're playing capture the flag with your friends, protect the bases, kill the other team, or just join random matches. Online has so many options that will keep you playing for a very long time, and it's actually fun. Avatar's gameplay falls into two genres, really. If you're staying playing as the humans, the game becomes a third-person shooter, kind of like Gears of War. If you choose to play as the Na'vi, the game becomes like a bad action-adventure game and hideous melee combat. The third-person shooter controls aren't that bad if you stay with the humans. Besides the actual running and gunning shooting mechanics, the players are able to make use of different powers at their disposal. By holding the L2 button, gamers are able to use up to four different powers. Now you can customize these powers later and swap out different abilities as you see fit, and find what best suits you. At the beginning, players start off with a speed boost, a ground pound, a health power up, and of course the camouflage. Although we mainly only used sprint, camouflage, and health. Still, airstrikes and rage come in pretty handy when playing online. Each side has their own different kinds of vehicles to ride. For you PS3 owners out there, the game actually does not make use of Sony's 6-axis, so the PS3 version of this game has no motion controls, unlike the Wii version. But we won't really talk about that. Now, every single ground vehicle controls exactly the same, and the controls aren't really anything to brag about. However, the helicopter thing controls very different, and it can be a bit of a pain. So much so that it gets pretty confusing too. Gamers need to use both joysticks in order to move the helicopter around, which actually gets pretty frustrating, and the more you bang into stuff, the more likely you will blow up and then have to restart the mission. The game actually offers checkpoints though when you die, so that's always a good thing. Players can refill your ammo by finding these little ammo ducks, because just like in a real war, you notice that you're going to be limited on ammunition and rounds, so it's the best idea to find these orange thingies and replenish your ammunition. 
Now actually bear with us guys, we have a laundry list of complaints for this game, although mainly this will cover the Navi. After choosing to save the planet with the hippie blue aliens, players are thrown into gameplay hell. We aren't joking either folks, it takes quite a bit of getting used to. But unlike the camera situation for the humans, the camera doesn't work that well for the Navi, especially when charging at enemies and performing melee attacks. The gameplay just feels completely clunky to the actual humans, and at times it feels like the game is unresponsive and the Navi are actually underpowered compared to their human counterparts, which makes for some very frustrating gameplay mechanics and throwing your controller moments. The graphics look so good in this game that this game is actually known for frame rate becoming choppy and laggy for a few seconds just so the environments can load. That's pretty bad. The radar in this game wasn't very good either, which honestly, we were very annoyed by this. It just doesn't work well and we wasted several hours trying to navigate and find the mineral needed to progress through the game. In fact, we needed to bring up the pause map just to find where we needed to go. That's terrible, folks. Besides the Navi not playing well, the boss fight against this giant cat in the fifth stage of the humans was really unnerving. Most of the time, it's actually the game's fault that you get hit because even after dodging or running away like the game wants you to, or going into camouflage, the cat will still manage to kill you. Wrap your head around that, folks. This is the only time we had significant problems with the camera controls for the RDA, because most of the time the camera really wasn't that bad for the humans. The music in this game is really nothing to brag about, and the score you hear in the movie is nothing like you hear in the game. Now the game's score isn't necessarily bad, but it's not very good either. Which sadly, this game feels like it's in limbo. It's just lukewarm, honestly. Believe it or not, this game actually has some redeeming qualities. The biggest strength going for this game is the amazing HD visuals. This game is just very pretty to look at, and the jungle and the overall level design is very beautiful to behold. The game never gives you enough time to look at the exquisite detail and the lush environments though. People with 3D capable TVs are in for a major treat. Although why Ubisoft is catering to that minority is beyond us. Because of this feature, we weren't able to show how incredible this game actually looks. But you get the idea by the above clips. It's a very breathtaking game. I haven't really seen this game's equal in the visual department, and for me it's like everything in the jungle had come to life. Just look at the epic details, folks. I'm impressed, Ubisoft. Since the RDA gameplay mechanics is more along the lines of long-range combat as opposed to bad melee combat, this part of the game is actually excellent. We had no problem running through the levels, aiming, shooting, racking up points, level upping, and playing online. The game, well, nowhere near as redefined as, say, Gears of War, the gameplay wasn't a total joke. What made us like this game is the four powers that was at our disposal. Besides the RDA story mechanics, the multiplayer is where we had the most fun in this game, and it's probably where you will spend most of your time if you think about it. The online play suffered next to no lag, and the servers hardly had any disconnecting problems. All in all, James Cameron's Avatar The Game is a decent game. It's not the best game on the market, mind you, but for what the game offers, it's great. The thing that impressed us the most about this game is the ability for players to choose a side. While the Navi's gameplay seems to drag this game down in flames, it was a unique idea to say the least, to combine third-person shooter and action-adventure platforming into one genre. Still, this game really didn't come up smelling of roses. In fact, the only real enjoyment from this game comes from the RDA storyline and of course the multiplayer mode. However, for a movie game, it's still pretty good considering the track record for movie games. Avatar has incredible HD 3D graphics, good third-person shooter gameplay mechanics, average music, intense battles, a level-up system, terrible story that doesn't seem to really add up, Really bad Navi gameplay, decent vehicle controls, cool sound effects, high replay value for at least two playthroughs, and great online multiplayer experiences. So Game Nights Entertainment gives James Cameron's Avatar the game 
a 6.5 out of 10. Although we really can't suggest picking this game up because of the high price point. However, the RDA and the online fun factor is definitely a great idea for a rental. Well, thanks so much for watching another Game Nights video review. Keep it locked here for more gameplay videos, occasional developer interviews, trailers, and don't forget to listen to our radio show every Wednesday. This is Kwing as always saying God bless and happy gaming. Have a safe and wonderful Christmas. Game Nights will return on January 6th. Until we meet again, gamers. This should be a You need to use your shards to tune the tree. No doubt the Willow has detuned over time. We need to bring it back to its original pitch. I'll see what I can do. Football!